Hi, I'm Alex Perry. I'm one of the software calibrators here at Dynan Engineering. And today I'm going to show you how to install your Dynantronics harness and box on your F8, X, M3, or M4. This car we have here is a 2015 F82 M4. As you can see, I have the Dynantronics harness here in my hand. I know this because it has an orange label here. This signifies that it is an M4. So first thing we're going to do for this install is we're going to take off some of the vehicle trim pieces so that we can access the DME. You're going to start off with a 10 millimeter socket and remove these trays here. There's uh, three bolts up here. There's arrows that signify if it's locked or not. Quarter turn to the right will unlock those. And then there's a panel pop right here that you'll need to get. Simple screwdriver or a set of uh, cutters will help you take that off. And this will just uh, pull out of the way and you can set this aside. Now down here you have a rubber trim piece. There's another uh, panel popper here. You'll need to remove these so that you can get access with your hands down to the DME. Next you're going to want to take the manifold map sensor off. It's uh, two Torx bits, two Torx bolts here on the back. They are T30 Torx. To get the second bolt, you'll have to pull this trim off a little bit. This will help when you're installing the harness as well. Now you can pull that map sensor out and set it aside. This has an O-ring seal, so just wiggle it back and forth until it comes out. And I prefer to set this up here next to the reservoir. It won't fall and will stay out of your way. Next thing you're going to want to do is there's two uh, wires here, they are two bundles. You're going to want to remove those so you can get your hand down there and get access to the DME. The way to do this is there's two push tabs on the back. It's a simple clip so you'll push down towards you and then you'll pull the clip out towards the driver compartment. That will remove the first one and the second one has the same push tab. Push the tab in and slide the connector. Now you can see if you look down there with a flashlight your DME is tucked down in there. Here's a basic DME. This is a MEVD-172. So you'll have three connectors, and these are the three connectors that we are going to remove. Connector one, we will remove first, then connector two, and connector three. Connector two and three is where the Dynatronics harness goes, and then you will connect the BMW harness side into the 58-pin female side of the Dynan harness. So you'll remove connector one, two, then three, and then when it goes back, it'll go three, two, one. Here's a demonstration of how to remove the locking mechanism for this connector. You're going to push down on this small tab right here with one finger and then grab the locking mechanism, slide it forward, and your connector will pop up. And you can easily lift the connector up. You'll need to do this on the first one, the second one, the third one. All locking mechanisms are the same. After you pull the first connector, you can pull up and look at it. It is a solid black connector and it has the same pins all the way across, four rows of those. Some pins are not populated. That's the connector number one. You can set that aside as that'll be the last one to go in and helps to get it out of your way. So you can do number two and number three. So now I've removed all three connectors. It's time to install your Dynatronics harness. Next thing to do is spray your Dynan connectors with the contact cleaner that we provided you in your kit. This connector lubricant will help fill the microscopic voids in your connections. Um, through the multiple miles that your car will receive, the connections will have slight vibration and cause imperfections in the two materials and this will fill those voids and help protect that from happening. So you will take and spray each connector, your two BMW connectors, your two 58 pin Dynan connectors, as well as your two Dynantronics connectors. Be generous with the spray. Using too much never hurts. As you can see on the Dynatronics harness, you have two of those BMW connectors. One is labeled 3B, the other is labeled 2B. You will install 3B, the one with the orange zip ties first, closest to the front of your car, then work your way back 3, 2, and then 1 is that first connector that you took out that does not have the big pins. Once you get the connector down there, you can push in and your locking mechanism will snap up a little bit. From there, you can finish the locking by pushing the locking mechanism so it's straight up and down, you'll hear it click. Then you can just give it a nice little tug to make sure that it's on there. Next, you will do connector two. That is the 
BMW connector with the white zip ties. It also signifies that it goes to the white connector on the BMW harness. What's easiest now to do is connect the BMW harness 3B connector. That is the black 58 pin connector. It represents the same that you have here on the dining connector side. We've got two big pins. Make sure you line those two pins up and then you can snap that together. So connector 3B and 2B are keyweighed. So you cannot mess up plugging either of them in. So remember the black 58 pin that has two big pins on it is 3B that goes into the orange connector. So once you've successfully got connector 3 plugged in to your Dynatronics harness, there's two different ways you can go about this. You can either plug connector 2 from the BMW harness into the Dynatronics harness or you can choose to plug the first connector of the BMW harness back into the DME. This will provide you a little bit more room and flexibility. It's up to you and whichever one you can get. I prefer to do the first connector first at this point because it gives me more flexibility in getting connector 2. So now I've put back connector 3, 2, and 1 and installed the BMW harness in the Dynatronics harness. So now you can reassemble this area. A little extra tip, there are two rubber mounts that do make it easier for you to remove the connectors that you can take off. If you've taken those off, put those back at this time as they're rubber mounted. They simply slide on and slide off. Next you can slide on the two connectors that you took off. They'll both click in once they're in place. Now reinstall the map sensor. Push it all the way in and then reinstall the two T30 Torx bit screws. As these are screws, it's best to hand tighten these to make sure they're started. And then from there you can screw them in. Do not over torque them as they, were, they are in a plastic manifold. Next we will run the Dynatronics harness around the back of the engine bay. The Dynatronics unit will sit on the passenger side underneath the windshield cowling. So you can run this behind this weather stripping piece and at this time you can reinstall the weather stripping piece and you will no longer need it to be undone. It's a simple channel that you can just push in the weather stripping will go right back in. You can route your Dynatronics harness right underneath the weather stripping and reinstall your lower cowling cover over here along with this rubber grommet. Don't forget to reinstall the push pin that holds this rubber trim piece in. To reinstall this lower cowling piece there's a clip on the center, then you'll push the back piece underneath the upper tray. Now with your 10 millimeter and a quarter turn to the right, each arrow will line up signifying that these are locked in. Now you can proceed to the other side of the car and install your Dynatronics box in its location. Now you will install your Dynatronics box on the passenger side underneath the lower cowling. Just like on the other side, there is a push pin that you can simply remove by lifting up on the pin, place that off to the side. Then with your 10 millimeter, remove the three screws that hold this in. Next you will be putting together your Dynatronics box. This is a pre-programmed M4 box that I have here in my hands. You have your box as well as your Velcro. You will need both pieces of Velcro for this job. The salt on the bottom of each box is another Dynatronics label. This label will be put on your door sill on the driver's side. Once you've removed the backing from the Velcro, you can go ahead and place the Dynatronics box in its desired location. This location is under the aluminum stress brace on top of the fuse block. So if you simply put the Dynatronics box in there at an angle and rotate it so that it's flat, you can then go ahead and stick down your Velcro on top of your fuse block and put that in its location. Now run the Dynatronics harness 
around the back, if not already done so. You can run this right to your Dynatronics box through the aluminum bracing. There's two holes. There's connector A and connector B. The first one is orange, the second one is blue and black. You will first install A and then B. And simply do this by pushing the connector in and locking the mechanism similar to that of the BMW harness. Last but not least on the install for this Dynatronics harness is your power wire. This is a red wire labeled with a plus 12 volt source. This will go to your battery terminal post next to where the Dynatronics is located. With a T47 Torx, you can remove this bolt. If you do not have a T47, a T45 will work. Once you put the ring terminal on, reinstall the bolt with your finger tight so that you do not strip the threads, and then tighten down. This here is a EO label that is in every Dynatronics kit. One thing that is special about our piggyback is that it is the only CARB certified for sale in California piggyback legal in this state. This EO label needs to be installed next to your Dynatronics unit or on top of your Dynatronics box. Now that you've installed your Dynatronics harness and box in its, in its uh, location, you will now install the trim piece. Just like on the other side, there's a push tab in the middle. You need to feed this trim piece underneath, slide it out, and then you'll have to slide the back end underneath. Just like that. A quarter, simple quarter turn to the left to line the arrows up will lock this piece down and reinstall your push tab. Now you've completed the installation of the underhood procedure. Now, power off your car, and you may go ahead and start it.